This video is all about the mitochondria. If we take a look at our animal cell first, we can see that the mitochondria is located in a few places in here. Uh, this is the one that's labeled, but we've got it here, there, and there. Uh, different cells are going to have different amounts of mitochondria. If we look at their purpose, it says the organelle in which energy is extracted from food during oxidative metabolism. Oxidative metabolism is a fancy word for saying digestion. It's like how you're breaking down the food that you're eating. Um, we require oxygen to do that, which is why you need oxygen from the air, hence the oxidative part of that statement. Uh, if you notice, this particular cell has three mitochondria in it. The number of mitochondria in a cell is going to vary depending upon its purpose. For example, things like muscle cells are going to have a far higher number of mitochondria than other things like nerve cells that just require less energy. But ultimately, uh, the mitochondria are providing energy for that cell in the form of something called ATP, which we actually spend a lot of time talking about later. This stands for adenosine triphosphate. Um, ATP is like the energy currency of the cell. We'll spend a whole chapter, actually, on respiration and talking about how this process works. Um, but if we look at another picture, we've got the plant cell. If you notice here, we've got the mitochondria in these as well. And again, this one just happens to show three different mitochondria. Uh, they are uh, technically, I guess, if we're looking at this one, mitochondrion is, uh, is the singular version of that one. So three different mitochondria in the, uh, in the plant cell. But that means this is one that's found in both. So there are some organelles that most of the organelles actually are found in both plant and animal cells. The mitochondria is one of those. Uh, to give you an idea of what this looks like, kind of look at the cartoony version of this one first and then a transmission electron microscope. Uh, one of the unique things about the mitochondria, which I'll give you a list of later, is that this one, just like the chloroplast has two membranes. There's an outer membrane surrounding the outside of it, and then there's an inner membrane as well. And just like in the chloroplast, the inner membrane is kind of all folded up. And this increases the surface area. It provides more spots inside of the mitochondria for the process of respiration to be taking place, which is how your body actually makes that ATP. Uh, there's two parts of this one. There's the cristae, which is the sort of inner membrane. So you can see that it's pointing to it over here. Uh, that's what the cristae is. And then the matrix is the fluid-filled inner portion of the mitochondria. And when we get to the chapter on respiration, you'll find that that process is actually broken down into two different portions or two different steps. One part of that process is actually happening in the inner membrane. The other portion of the process is happening in the matrix of the mitochondria. So it is very significant that this one has two separate parts. This is one of those organelles that we'll refer back to in a couple chapters. I'm expecting you uh, to remember some of those details. Uh, the last thing we're going to look at is this picture from a transmission electron microscope. There we go. I made that so small it was hard to blow it up there. Um, this one is showing you what scientists, are, again, are actually seeing when they're looking at these things under the microscope. I like these kinds of images, but ultimately, you know, you should be seeing things like this as well, so you get an idea for what some of these organelles really look like. Uh, you can see that folded up kind of inner membrane. You can't see it in the kind of detail that you could with our cartoon version of the image, but this is what scientists are actually seeing when they're looking at these things under a transmission electron microscope. Uh, most cells are going to have a pretty high number of them as opposed to the three that were represented in those images there. You can see here they're actually able to capture two next to each other. you got that outer membrane and that folded inner membrane showing that in both of these. So we've actually got two separate mitochondria there in that picture. The last thing that we'll talk about are some unique features of the mitochondria. The first one, and this is very similar to what we saw with the, uh, the chloroplast, is that it has its own DNA. This again is going to be a big deal when we get to the end of the chapter. We're talking about the endosymbiotic theory, origin of the first cell, you know, those kinds of things. This is going to be some important evidence for us to talk about. Another one that ties into that one is that it has two membranes. So that again will come up again uh, when we get to the end of the chapter. The final one is that this is what produces ATP. Again, that stands for adenosine triphosphate. You don't have to know what it stands for just yet. If, if you know ATP by itself, 
that'll be good enough now. When we study respiration in detail, uh, that's when you'll have to know like the, the full name and all that stuff. But ATP ultimately is just the energy currency of the cell. Ugh. So this is what the cell uses for all the different processes that drive uh, different steps inside the cell. You know, for example, we're going to get to things at the end of the chapter called like, active transport. Active transport requires energy. That kind of energy is ATP. So anything that happens inside the cell that requires energy to take place, ATP is the stuff that's driving those processes. Um, as always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it.